I've always believed that animation could be so much more than just a child's filter for a live action story. In fact, I made an entire video defending the merits of animation and arguing that it deserves far more attention from mature audiences, especially in the West. And it seems like some people are finally starting to agree. Over the past few months, I have had the pleasure to watch some Western efforts in mature animation and anime. Projects like Star Wars Visions and many other streaming giant funded anime have all brought more attention to the medium, which is great, and I enjoyed most of these shows. Most of these shows. <laughs> but none of them felt like a major shift or leap forward for storytelling or visuals in animation. Each show demonstrated something worthy of merit. Visions, for example, had great English voice acting, a rarity in anime, and at least the Cowboy Bebop adaptation brought attention to the masterful source material the series was based on. But none of these projects were a game changer. They were good, but it wasn't that statement piece that showcased why mature animation is creatively valuable for adults, or why it's an essential style of filmmaking. Luckily, 2021 still had something else in store though. Arcane appeared out of nowhere for me. I've never played League of Legends or followed the tremendous fan base that supports the game's community. But as soon as Arcane was released, it was impossible to avoid the universal acclaim and hype surrounding the show. While some may have predicted the commercial success, few could have ever imagined the critical acclaim that Arcane would go on to garner. The show debuted at number one in 52 countries and peaked at number two in the US, while boasting the highest ever rating for an original show in Netflix's history on IMBD. Despite these absurd numbers though, I went into Arcane with tempered expectations. Surely these were just League of Legends fans bolstering the show's numbers, right? Right? Without mincing words, Arcane is astounding. Riot Games' showrunners, the star-studded voice cast, and Studio Fortiche's gorgeous animation have crafted a visually breathtaking, well-written, and emotionally powerful tale. Basically the opposite of almost every other video game adaptation. Many have already showered the show with praise, and trust me, I will too. But I believe Arcane's excellence doesn't just come from a smart plot and high-end production values. Instead, and maybe more importantly, Arcane's key advantage comes from a commitment to understand and showcase duality through its multi-perspective narrative and its hybrid style animation. Arcane takes place in the city of Piltover, a futuristic and utopian society whose primary purpose seems to be progress above all else. The people here are wealthy and ruled by a sort of oligarchic council who, at least at the start of the show, seems like they're doing a pretty great job. Life is good in this beautiful city, but across an ominous bridge lies a dark and crime-ridden underworld harboring the homeless, crime lords, and drug addicts. It's a place that the people of Piltover try to cover up and forget about. This rejected division is known as the underworld, and it's a dog-eat-dog -dog environment favoring only the strongest. Here we meet our main characters, Vi and Powder, two young sisters fighting to survive and asking questions like, why does there have to be an underworld in the first place? And why can enforcers from Piltover control the same people they themselves have forsaken? The story smartly doesn't just center on perspectives from one locale though. On the other side of things in Piltover, we follow the young scientist Jace, who pushes the envelope to innovate for the sake of human progress. While the city is concerned about what his works might be used for in the future, and what might happen if the underworld gets their hands on his technology, Jace believes in the human condition and that despite the warnings, he can change the world for the better. Throughout the show, plenty more perspectives are added like the power-hungry drug dealer Silco, or the noble cop Caitlin, or even the political manipulator Mel to add differing arguments to the philosophies of the main cast. These varying and often contrasting character perspectives create a theme of duality in conflict throughout the show. The poor against the rich, the weak against the strong, the malleable against the unwavering. Instead of giving answers to the audience, different perspectives create different answers, effectively giving audiences multiple solutions to try and fix the same problems. 
But because we see how each solution is imperfect through these alternative perspectives, it creates a realistic and unclear path forward for the audience. Jace's dilemma is a fantastic example. At his core, he's a visionary who truly only wants to help others, not too far from someone like a young Mark Zuckerberg. Just as Zuckerberg wanted to connect people and bring humanity together with his platform Facebook, Jace believes his technology, Hextech, will lift people out of poverty, heal ailments, and create a better world for everyone. Today, we see social media very differently from how it was envisioned. Facebook has become a powerful tool to disinform and harm, not unite and harmonize. Similarly, as soon as the council begins to allow Jace's Hextech to grow and improve lives, human nature begins to see Hextech as a tool to control and gain power. Should the technology be destroyed because of this, what about all the lives that it's saved and the people it's helped? Certain characters take different stances, but Arcane always provides counterpoints to every possible solution. Another great example of this dichotomic narrative is the relationship between the main two sisters, Vi and Powder. Stylistically, Vi's red hair and physically imposing nature contrasts with Powder's blue hair and her scrawny build. Each character's personalities also couldn't be more different. Vi is a tough, rugged, natural leader, and easily the most capable of her ragtag group in the underworld. Powder, on the other hand, is clumsy, quiet, and often overlooked. Nearly everyone around Powder doubts she can live up to the expectations of her big sister. As Vi and Powder begin to align themselves with different moral codes as the show moves forward, and we see different perspectives in Piltover and the Underworld, ultimately our connection to Vi and Powder's relationship is what holds the hope for unity and harmony in Arcane together. In a show often without easy answers and constant political divides, Vi and Powder's connection is the thread that holds the seams of division from breaking. We've all had bad days. But we learn. And we stick together. Of course, everything in Arcane's story isn't perfect. Some of the magical devices feel a tad oversimplified and arbitrary. Seriously, Jace, you're telling me this has no military intentions? And certain character relationships could have received more attention specifically Powder and Silco, or Victor and Jace. But these are all minor qualms, and they're not what I want to focus on here. For the most part, this story could have easily stood on its own. From the duality in characters and political conflicts, it's all great stuff. But the real showstopper in Arcane isn't just the solid plot. Instead, just as the narrative smartly views issues from both perspectives, French animation studio Fortiche's gorgeous animation flawlessly fuses the strengths of both 2D and 3D animation to craft a wholly original and stunning visual showcase. Typically, 2D animation is praised for its unique and highly stylized visual elements. Just look at any classic 2D animated feature, or any modern day anime. There's so much diversity and fantasy in every rendition of this animation style. Each frame is carefully drawn and deliberated over to build anything the filmmakers can imagine. Unfortunately, this makes 2D animation a tremendously time-consuming and exacting practice. Creating motion specifically requires more drawings, longer development times, and a more expensive budget. That's why most 2D animation is animated on twos, meaning that for every 24 frames in a second, there's only 12 drawings or 12 frames of motion instead of a full 24. Alternatively, 3D CG animation has much less of a problem with movement. The motion rigs and capture devices this style affords give studios smoother and more physically accurate motion. A highly dynamic action sequence in 3D animation, for example, can be more natural, filmic, and less demanding than if each frame were hand-drawn and measured. But despite this advantage, 3D animation isn't perfect. The style is far more photoreal than 2D animation, 
which forces studios to work with more realistic lighting solutions and organic motion parameters which can streamline the look of certain films. It's hard to imagine a show or scene like this in 3D animation, for example. Arcane, though, feels like a melting pot of both styles, where the best attributes of each fuse together and dance as one. Settings and environments are all hand-painted, and characters' faces and skin tones match the aesthetic perfectly. Geometry and scenes look like a canvas with abstract shading and colorful charisma awash in every locale. When looking frame by frame, Vi's face, or any character for that matter, never gives off the impression of CG animation. But as soon as this gets put into motion, the fluidity and flair of the 3D animation makes the entire package shine even brighter. The artistic 2D style comes alive with the aid of this 3D animation. The characters in Arcane are almost always 3D models with graphical textures to make them fit into the 2D aesthetic. I was blown away by the subtle eye movements and behavioral tics that Arcane so effortlessly visualizes on its 3D models. The amount of emotion we can extract from scenes like this one of Powder crying is astounding. Another element to highlight in that scene is the fantastic motion blur. It gives the show a cinematic and grounded look, but more importantly in other scenes, it greatly adds to the fluidity of the action sequences. And about those action sequences, these have to be some of the most impressive scenes I've seen in animation. Because all the models aren't physically real and arcane, the virtual camera and characters don't have to worry about hiding the visual effects. The entire show is CG animated, so shots can hold frame and emphasize punches, kicks, and flurries without the need for stunt doubles, clever camera work, or other live action trickery. As we watch blood fly out of the characters' mouths and magic devices charge up to fire, the visual effects are superb and retain that hand-drawn look of the show. The main point here is that Arcane doesn't sterilize the 2D art with the 3D CG. Instead, both synergize perfectly with one another, making Arcane a fresh new perspective on animation. And when all this combines with the incredible soundtrack and vocal collaborations, it feels revolutionary, not just evolutionary. Arcane is better than I could have ever expected. League of Legends or not, this show deserves all the praise it's won. As an adaptation or expansion of the source material, it feels wholly accessible to newcomers and never comes across as an advertisement for the games. Arcane's ability to showcase multiple perspectives in both story and animation highlight a value of understanding and consideration rare in today's polarized world. This is the type of show that I've been waiting for Western animators to make. Arcane is the most powerful demonstration of mature animation I've seen from the West in years. As a narrative, it's emotionally and philosophically resonant. But as an animated series, Arcane feels absolutely essential. <laughs>